So good morning again, and I'm going to continue with a series of Monday talks, short dharmets, on faith, five aspects of faith, and or the Pali word sada, and I, considering that there are five different aspects of this word. And one of those aspects is translated into English as faith, the most common translation, which I talked about yesterday. And today I'm going to talk about confidence. Whether it's faith that something is of value and important, faith that there's something that supports us, guides us, And for Buddhists, it's the faith and the practice that supports us, guides us. That helps make us feel safe in this world and find freedom. And to have faith that the practice does that becomes increasingly challenging when our world, our life becomes challenging. And it's useful to remember that the way that the story of the Buddha's own quest for enlightenment begins, he went off to search for enlightenment in order to address the fundamental human conditions of sickness, old age, and death. That this practice and what he discovered was an answer to those, that quest, that concern. And he then taught for many years a practice that was not simply a practice of coping in our daily life or a bit stress reduction in our daily life or to have pleasant experiences in our daily life. But the practice was originally designed to deal with the fundamental existential issues and problems, challenges that humans have. But to be up against those challenges in a big way, to be up against the death, sickness, the challenges of old age, when they're, they can be quite ferocious, they can be quite challenging these things and to have the faith to have the motivation to have the strength to do the practice in the face of these challenges sometimes takes a lot of faith it takes a lot of conviction a lot of feeling yes this is possible So the degree of faith that sometimes is called upon varies very much depending on the circumstance of our life. Someone whose life goes relatively well and will say, I don't need any faith. But someone who's facing huge challenges, it's often not so clear what is, um, you know, what helps and what the path is and where to go. And even Buddhist paths sometimes can seem, really, this works, this is for this as well. And to tap into a deep faith, conviction, trust in this path, in this practice, sometimes is necessary so that we give ourselves to the practice, that we trust the practice enough to place ourselves solidly on the path of practice more in more than in the path of collapse or succumbing or the path of fear or something else so with faith in the practice some belief in the practice some so not so much a belief in a creed but a belief in a practice belief in a 
in a, a way to go forward that at first might be untested. And the second aspect of sada is confidence. And to sit and to practice to walk the path with confidence is part of the sada that supports us. And the confidence is different than faith. We can have faith that something is important and useful, but that faith can be a little bit at a distance. It's kind of like we have a treasure and we know we have the treasure, but we don't actually use the treasure. The confidence of sada is the what gives us strength to actually engage in the practice. That we have some confidence that it's worthwhile. And the greater the challenges we face, the more useful it is to tap into our confidence. Or if we don't have enough confidence ourselves, sometimes it's actually useful in your own free will, if you think it's useful, to borrow the confidence of other people. And that's one of the reasons why it's so useful to meditate together with others or to have Dharma friends. Because to be around people, other people, people who practice more than you or even teachers or um, is that we do, in some degree, borrow or are infused by or inspired by or informed by their confidence. That confidence is, and faith to some degree, confidence is contagious. It isn't just viruses that are contagious. There's lots of good qualities we have that we can somehow catch from other people or our, our inner life resonates with what we feel in other people and other people's confidence or goodness or dedication, faith can resonate with their own capacity to have the same. So sometimes if we don't have enough confidence ourselves, it can be useful to borrow it or tap into it through other people. But not for the purpose of blind faith, but for the purpose of testing, testing the practice for ourselves, engaging the practice ourselves, doing the work for ourselves to find out for ourselves that this works. So certainly it's important to have confidence in the practice. It's useful to have confidence in oneself. To have a, enough confidence that yes, I can do this. And I say this word uh, carefully, the idea of enough confidence. Enough is enough, just enough to be able to do it. We don't, it doesn't have to look heroic. It just be enough to kind of get us to the next sitting, to engage in the next breath, to just really show up for this breath or this moment of mindfulness or just enough to have some continuity of practice through the sitting, continuity of practice through the days. And then slowly it can build and build. But it's kind of like you don't start a marathon by sprinting. It just You have to uh, start the marathon just enough to be able to keep going and going. So to have just enough confidence to go along, to practice and dedicate yourself to it is enough. So to have confidence in oneself. And there also it's helpful sometimes to practice with others because uh, other people can have confidence in you. Or as I said yesterday, other people can believe in you. And to feel that other people believe in you, yes, you can do it, is, can be invaluable when the challenges are large. Yes, you can do it. I, I, I value you, I appreciate you, I believe in you, I know you can do it. 
And one of the reasons to meditate together, even if it's uh, online, is I hope that there is a kind of mutual I believe in you spirit that we have, that we value the people we're meditating with. We notice them enough that our heart sings, our heart appreciates and values them. Yes, you can do it. Or even maybe better, maybe, or richer is yes, we can do it. It's not just the individual, but we are doing it together and supporting each other. So the confidence of practicing, the confidence in oneself. And there's also confidence in the goal of practice. That uh, yes, there is a goal to this Buddhist practice. Some people call it a goalless goal because it's not so much an attainment of something as it is the shedding of all the obstructions, all the limitations, all the ways in which we cling and get attached. So that without those attachments, we can discover a unshakable peace. So we can uh, experience for ourselves what it's like to feel at home, to feel like we're um, happy and contented and, and uh, really at peace uh, in a profound way. To be just here. And I like the idea of just being here content with this moment, but not the kind of contentment that makes, makes us lethargic or complacent, but the kind of contentment that keeps us open and available for whatever needs to happen for the next moment, where we're confident that we can meet whatever comes our way. And then for me personally, it's the mindfulness practice that I learned through Buddhism that has given me unshakable confidence that if I can be mindful, I can find my way. If I can be mindful, I can be safe. If I can be mindful, I can find the appropriate way to engage in, to uh, respond to, whatever comes my way. And I hope that that response is one that contributes to the welfare and happiness and well-being 